by its rod. And this one's called Being on Fire for Jesus. So I'll try to describe a bit about what uh, it's like to be on fire for Jesus in a cold Christian world. So what would a Christian on fire look like? Full of joy? Well, it's sort of like, it says in the Bible, Jesus is going to baptize us with fire. It was like on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was baptizing people, it was like there was tongues of fire on their head. So it's similar to that. It's like uh, having a fresh Pentecost all the time. <laughs> well, what does a on-fire Christian look like? Well, an on-fire Christian loves God's Word. If you love God, you love His Word. You learn how to be on fire through reading this. That's like what it says in the Bible, love God with all your heart, strength, mind, soul. I guess that's what you would call being on fire for God. It's like you're consumed with them like a fire consumes things. You're consumed, your flesh is consumed by the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit is like a fire. So a on-fire Christian would read the whole Bible many times, learn lots of great truths from it. Cold Christians would never pick this up. they just try to listen to what the pastor's saying and forget what he said on a Sunday or something. The pastor probably only knows about 25% of the Bible anyways. <laughs> Leaves the other 75% never spoken. Satan wants to hide the truth of the Bible from us. He wants to keep us away from it. It's like a sword against Satan. So Satan tries to put our fire out. And God wants us to try to get him to fill us with fire. Fire for him. A first love type experience for a bride and a bridegroom. You've left your first love. If you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. If you're on fire, it's good. If you're cold, well, maybe you'll start to get on fire. But being lukewarm is sort of like you've tasted a bit of the fire and you don't like it that much and you want to stay in the world. It's like being on the fence or something. So being on fire would be sort of like uh, being more totally, uh, totally wanting God rather than partially wanting Him. Loving Him with a divided heart or something instead of a full heart. It's like people talk about what they love the most. Are they talking about awesome Jesus all the time or something else? Well, let me tell you about the sports game last night or the rock star concert last night or whatever. The movie I watched, the movie star. Let me tell you about the pizza I ate last night or something. They love things, but it's they don't love Jesus that much, most people. Because <laughs> Satan tells them to love the world more than Jesus. More than God. So to be on fire for God would be to uh, have fervent love for God. Sometimes I think of the word fervent like fire, but uh, it's a very passionate love, fervent love. It's like, maybe like a husband and wife or something. They got this fervent love for each other. That, that's, well, when they first get married, maybe. And they're uh, wanting to be with each other for some sort of pleasure together. But we're supposed to be having that pleasure together from our relationship with God way above human relationships. And human relationships aren't going to fulfill us that much anyways, but our relationship with God can. So what does a hot Christian or a Christian on fire look like? Well, they like to do what the Bible says to do. They read the Bible. They find out what God wants his people to do. They try to do it with his help to do it. 
they study the Bible, maybe try to teach the Bible, they pray, take communion, give thanks to God, praise God. They just try to hear what he's telling them to do and get busy doing it with his power to do it. But sometimes it's hard when you're living in a cold Christian world and you're an on-fire Christian. It's like you're smiling and happy, nobody else is. Because they, they don't want to hear God's voice and obey him. If they did, they'd be doing something like church, like the book of Acts, on fire like the days of Pentecost. But because Satan deceives their mind, Satan puts their candle over or whatever, Satan lets, directs them to let their oil, their fire, their oil lamp, not have enough oil in their lamps. They get to the bridegroom. So it's all about wanting Jesus above all things or wanting God above all things. So on, Christi on fire Christians living in a cold Christian world would be like me, I guess. Been a Christian for about 35 years and you just walk into these churches and it's like there's icicles hanging from people's ears or something. I come to church all dressed up to sit down and shut up and listen to some guy talk about something about Christmas or something for two months. And then I go home or something. And Satan loves it. So it's like uh, there's coming a time where God has to judge and punish all these cold Christians and these wicked godless people. Like the days of Noah part two or World War three. World War two part two. Great Depression part two. Economic collapse coming. And this might start to build a fire in Christians when they lose everything. It's like the Job story. God allowed Job to be sifted like wheat and took everything away from him, and yet Job could still say something to God like Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> Can we say that when Satan sifted us like wheat and we're in suffering and everything's going wrong for us or something? God's trying to test us. Job, am I all you need to be happy? Or do you need family and possessions and all this other stuff? Like life is like a love test, a bridal trial, to see what we love the most. Is it the God who made us? Is it the one who died on the cross for us? Is it the one we're going to live forever if we go to heaven? King of the universe, Jesus. Do we believe what the scriptures say? Jesus said, I am with you always. He's in this room right now. He's in my body right now. I'm one with Jesus. It's like we're married already. Anyways. Uh, so Jesus wants to be with us. And it's like a vision I had a couple weeks ago where I was watching stuff on the internet. And I got this vision of Jesus out in the... I was in the bedroom watching stuff on the internet. Then I got this vision of Jesus in my living room saying on the couch saying, come be with me, come be with me, Ron. And I'm thinking, well, I thought you wanted me to search for stuff here on the internet or something. Why are you sort of in the living room now instead? You're wanting me to get closer to you over there. And it was just Jesus telling me that sometimes you get distracted with things. Sometimes you can't hear his voice. My sheep hear my voice. I know when they follow me and start following him where he really wants you to be. If they just get this desire, I should go over on the couch and pray or something. If Jesus wants me on the couch to pray, then I've got to be listening to his voice and not be looking at something stupid on the Wicked Land internet screen. In my study. So we have to understand that, uh, well, maybe it would be easier if we had some great hot on fire churches to go to with our time. But that doesn't seem possible today. When I asked Jesus about it, how come all the churches in my city are cold? 
He says, well, they got free will choice and they want to be. I can't force them. The only way you're going to get like hot churches on fire churches is if people get in a, like in a prodigal son's pig pen and they want to return to God with their first love fire or whatever and uh, start doing what he's telling them to do. It's not hard to understand what Jesus wants us to do. It's written here. It's like this vision I had in a boring church service of Jesus pointing to a Bible at the front of the church saying, do it this way, do it this way, do church the book of Acts way. But they don't want to do it that way. The real Jesus ain't welcome in their church on Sunday. Satan dressed up in a Jesus costume comes in and tells them what to do. Yeah, I'm Jesus. I want everybody to sit down and shut up and be miserable. And they no demon deliverance here. And they follow Satan to create these kind of cold Christian churches. But you can't force anybody to get saved. And you can't force anybody to be on fire for Jesus. Only the people that want to be on fire for Jesus will be on fire for Jesus. God doesn't force anybody. If you're not on fire for Jesus now, you'll be ending up in the fires of hell later. Type stuff. But they don't seem to understand that. It's like when you see some kind of great worship at some kind of a church where people are dancing and everybody's filling with the Holy Spirit's joy or something. Some conference that maybe caused a lot of money to go to or something. Uh, you you wish you had something like that in your town or something to go to. On fire church entertainment or something. But uh, you, you probably don't. So you've got to learn that you don't need great churches. Paul could be on fire for Jesus in a prison for two years. Job could be on fire for God when Satan's sifting them like wheat. It doesn't matter what circumstance you're in. You can be on fire for God, on fire for Jesus. If you believe it, you can experience it. And if you don't, I can't be filled with the Holy Spirit. I can't be on fire for Jesus. Well, you're not going to be filled with the Spirit or on fire for Jesus. So like I said, when trouble hits in the future, it could be earthquakes knocking over nuclear plants or something that uh, is going to cause people to say, hey, maybe I need God's help. And then maybe they'll want to come to people like me and say, how come you're peaceful and joyful when all this chaos is going on? Well, God told me it was coming. He told me he can help me through it. You, you want to get saved and get God's help to deal with this too type thing? You want to be on fire for Jesus like me too or something? Maybe get some more people on fire for Jesus then when the whole world's shaken with God's judgments, which can produce good things. It can punish the wicked with it, and it can try to wake his bride up to get more on fire for him through it. And you got to believe nothing's too difficult for God. He can speak a word and the earthquake stops. He could cause you to fly up in the air so that you're not hurt by the earthquake until it stops. There's nothing Jesus can't do. It's like it's it's like exciting thinking about the great judgments coming in the future, the tribulation or whatever. To see your Jesus do a lot more miraculous things and cause people to want to get saved by him or to repent of their sins and get on fire for them through the tribulation that the judgment of God on the wicked is causing. Jesus doesn't is not afraid of the tribulation coming. If he's living in you, you don't have to be afraid of it. It's like we need some kind of suffering or difficulty in our life. Like it says in the scriptures, Jesus learned good things. Jesus learned obedience through his sufferings. Our sufferings don't have to cause us to become cold, cold Christians. Our sufferings can cause us to become on fire Christians, seeking more of God's help to deal with it with his grace like Paul's thorn in the flesh. So that we don't fear death. We're not going to die until God wants us to die. He's in control of it all. And he can help you through it, bring good out of it for you. <laughs> Make you happy in it and help you not to be bothered by it. So it's, being on fire for Jesus is like being filled with the Holy Spirit, like on the day of Pentecost. It's having Jesus live in you. A consuming fire. 
God is like a consuming fire. Consuming all that is sinful, wrong in us, replacing it with what is right and good. If we'll let him burn up this flesh, Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit, so that I may live in the Spirit instead of my flesh, so that I may follow you instead of the flesh or the devil. So Satan's like a fire for Jesus stealer, and we got to resist him. Sin kind of puts the fire out, but obedience keeps the fire going. So if we want to be on fire for Jesus, we got to hear what he's telling us to do. Get busy doing it, not in our own strength and power, but with his power to do it. And then good things get created. And then some ministry work goes forward, even in a very cold Christian world where the church doesn't want anything to do with you hardly. But maybe in the future, there'll be a church that cares about the real Jesus, invites them into their church, probably in homes, and the Holy Spirit comes down like the day of Pentecost, and people are on fire. I've only tasted a few church activities like that in my life. And when I try to tell people, hey, we should do church like the Book of Acts, they say, oh, we're not interested in that. I got a career here. Well, people might leave my church if we do it right or something. We got to keep doing church wrong to keep the people coming or something. And they don't know what kind of problems they're going to get into on Judgment Day with that kind of thinking. But you can't force them. They want the wrong Jesus, they can have the wrong Jesus. They want to be cold Christians, let them be cold Christians. It's like the angel says in Revelation, Let the wicked be wicked still. Rejoice in the Lord God Almighty. So, God sometimes tells me to make these videos and tries to explain to people what he's trying to help them to understand. But if the people watching them never want to do what he's saying, then it's not going to work for them. They don't want to read the Bible. They don't want to pray. They don't want to take communion. They don't want to seek God for his joy or his peace. It's not going to work for them. If they don't want to understand the spiritual war and start winning it, they're going to lose it type stuff. So we can tell them that... Uh, God can set you on fire, like it says. Jesus would rather have us hot than lukewarm or gold. And he can make us that way. Whatever he says in the Bible he'll do for us, he can do it if we believe in him too. It's just that people are so confused with the demons, so confused with the cold Christian church teaching and their godless parent teaching that Unless they start saying, God, teach me how to be on fire for you now, they're not going to learn that stuff. So I'm trying to explain a bit about how I get on fire and stay on fire. As the Holy Spirit leads me to. So basically it's uh, understand salvation and get saved. Your sins separate you from God, but Jesus can take your sins away with his blood and his suffering on the cross. He did that so I could be close to him, so I could be on fire for him now. And he wants to give you the Holy Spirit's fire to, to think he is the greatest of all. To be on fire for him. And just want to think about him 24-7. Never stop thinking about him. There's nothing without Jesus anyways. Jesus is everything I need to be happy. We're supposed to get everything we need from Jesus and then share it with others. I found what I'm looking for. I found Jesus. Instead of looking for happiness from the world and never finding it and singing the old U2 song, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Pressed, fearful, angry, following the demons rather than Jesus. This will make you happy. That'll make... No. They never tell you Jesus will make you happy. Except for Christians that are saying, yeah, Jesus makes me happy, he can make you happy too. You can be on fire for Jesus if you want to be. So it's about getting saved. It's about do what he tells you to do. Study his word, let him teach you truth. He wants you to know who he is. He wants you to know what he wants you to do. It's about prayer. It's about Bible study. It's about having a right worship attitude towards him. So that's a bit about being on fire for Jesus. And I'm going to put a little song about being on fire with maybe some pictures on and 
to end this video now. I'm so tired